This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to speak about why a mortgagee has no right to insurance proceeds after the debt is paid, and that the satisfaction of a mortgage eliminates every right the mortgagee has to recover under a homeowner's policy. In Thomas P. Williams v. Nationwide Insurance, the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania on March 24, 2023, resolved a dispute where Nationwide had denied the claim of its insured because they failed to comply with the policy's post-loss duties by failing to appear for scheduled examinations not producing requested documents, making material misrepresentations to Nationwide, and because Nationwide's investigation of the fire revealed that it was intentionally set. The homeowners sold the fire-damaged property to the plaintiff, Mr. Williams. The money from the sale was used to satisfy the entirety of the homeowner's outstanding mortgage with a bank. The plaintiff requested that the insurer reimburse him for the amount he claims he paid towards satisfying the homeowner's mortgage. He based his request on a standard mortgage clause in the homeowner's insurance policy which stated that a denial of the homeowner's claim would not preclude payment to a valid claim of the mortgagee. PNC Bank was the original mortgagee. The plaintiff claims that he stepped into the shoes of the bank once he allegedly paid the balance of the mortgage. Thus, the plaintiff claims that he is entitled to the same payment the insurer would have had to pay the bank, namely the amount it would cost to repair the property. The insurer refused to pay the plaintiff's claim, and the plaintiff sued. The plaintiff, Mr. Williams, alleged that he had purchased a fire-damaged property and paid off the mortgage encumbering the property. But what had really happened was that he paid the Rouches, the owners, who used that money to pay off the debt. The Rouches owned property located in Albertsville, Pennsylvania. They had insured the property for property damage under a policy with Nationwide and had a mortgage on the property with PNC Bank N.A. A fire caused damage to the property, and the Rouches submitted a claim to Nationwide under the policy, and Nationwide eventually determined the amount of the adjusted claim was $103,000. However, Nationwide later denied the claim because of breach of condition and fraud by Mr. and Mrs. Roosh. The policy contained a mortgage clause, like most homeowners, that allowed payment to the bank upon receipt of a proof of loss. Williams purchased an assignment of the proceeds of the policy from the Roaches, but not from the bank. At the time of the sale, the Roaches owed $135,490.13 on the mortgage and used the funds from the sale to, by, to Mr. Williams to satisfy the outstanding balance. At that time, Nationwide had not paid any payment to PNC pursuant to the mortgage clause. After receiving the payment, PNC filed a satisfaction of mortgage with the Carbon County Recorder of Deeds. Williams argued that because his funds paid to the Roaches satisfied the mortgage on the property and because Nationwide would have had to pay PNC if it fulfilled the policy conditions, he stepped into the shoes of PNC. Nationwide argued that it had no obligation to pay under the mortgage clause because the mortgage was satisfied. Further, Nationwide contended that the Williamses misconstrued his property interest because he stepped into the shoes of the mortgagor, the Roaches, not the mortgagee, PNC. When he brought the property, William's interest in the property became that of owner, not mortgagee. 
he had no rights under Nationwide's policy because the Ruches had none to give him. Their claim had been denied. The court concluded that Nationwide was correct on both of the points it alleged. There was no evidence demonstrating Williams assumed any legal rights under the mortgage. While Williams' novel argument demonstrated a logical creativity, he cited no case law and the court found none to support his contention that a purchaser of a property steps into the shoes of the mortgagee when the funds from the purchase are used to satisfy an outstanding mortgage. Nationwide averred that Williams had no cognizable claim because the Ruches satisfied the mortgage at closing, and there was no present obligation to pay the mortgagee because the law permits a mortgagee to recover the amount necessary to satisfy the mortgage, but no more. The court found that because the mortgage was satisfied and there is no evidence of a new mortgage, the mortgage is not entitled to any further payment under the policy standard mortgage clause. The fire damaged the property, and after the loss, Williams obtained his interest in the property. The insured mortgage was fully satisfied and neither party presented any evidence that once Williams obtained his interest, there was any outstanding mortgage on the property. Therefore, any further recovery under the policy would constitute an unjust enrichment for the mortgagee. At bottom, the mortgagee cannot seek further payment under the policy, and Nationwide had no obligation to pay. The court granted Nationwide's motion for summary judgment and denied Williams' cross-motion for summary judgment. The court entered judgment in favor of Nationwide and against Williams. In my opinion, Nationwide had issued two contracts. First, with the Ruches as named insured, and second, with PNC Bank as mortgagee. Once Nationwide denied the claim, of the named insureds, it had the obligation to pay PNC if PNC presented a sworn proof of loss. Before PNC even attempted to protect its rights under the policy, Williams purchased the property, the Ruches used the money to pay off the bank and satisfied the mortgage, thereby eliminating the right of PNC to make a claim to Nationwide. Had Williams obtained an assignment from PNC and paid them directly rather than through the property owners, he might have had a claim. He did not, and his creative argument failed. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. You can also subscribe at that blog to receive notice of every blog posting, which usually are five to six a week. And you can also subscribe to the videos on rumble.com and youtube.com. And if you do, I'd appreciate it if you click on the like button on YouTube or the rumble button on rumble.com. And if you found these videos and the blog posting to be of interest or useful to you or your friends and colleagues, please tell them about it so that they can also subscribe to the blog and the videos. Thank you for your attention.